This way you can make an anti-cap system for your Discord.js version 14 bot, so let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also have the bot tier, which is the full zip file of the exact bot used in the tutorial videos. We also have three bot packages, which are fully coded Discord bots based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested, and with that, let's go ahead and get into the code. All right, so to start, let's go over to schemas, and we're going to go ahead and create anti-caps.js. Within this, we're going to go ahead and save a guild string, a channel string, and an allowed users array. After we do that, we can close out, and we're going to go over to commands. In here, we can go ahead and create anti-caps.js. To start, we're going to go ahead and get our slash command builder and our embed builder from our discord.js package, and we're going to go ahead and get our anti-cap schema from schemas slash anti-caps, which is what we just created. Then we can just do module.exports, and we're going to go ahead and do data. We can do new slash command builder. We're going to go ahead and set our name. We're going to do anti-caps. Then we can go ahead and set a description here. We're going to go ahead and say anti-caps. That's not going to be viewable. We're going to go ahead and add a sub command. We're going to go ahead and do command arrow function, command a set name. We're going to go ahead and set the name to setup. We're going to add a description, which is going to be set up the anti-cap system. We're going to add a channel option with the name channel, the description of the channel to block caps in, and that's going to be required. And then we're going to add a string option with the name allowed IDs. We're going to set the description to list the allowed user IDs, and then we're going to provide an example like this. Um, and we're not going to set required to true on that. Then we can go ahead and add another sub command. This one is going to have the name of disable. We're going to set a description to disable the anti-cap system. We're going to add a channel option with the name channel and the description of the channel to disable the system in, and we're going to set required to true. After we do that, add a comma here, and we can say async executes. Let's go ahead and get our interaction, and we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to start off by getting our options, and we're going to go ahead and set that equal to our interaction. Then we're going to do const sub equals options and we can go ahead and do get sub command next let's go ahead and do const channel equals and we can do options that get channel and we're going to go ahead and get our channel and then we're going to go ahead and also get our data so we can do const data equals await anti caps that find one guild interaction guild id channel our channel id then we're going to do async function and we can do send message let's go ahead and get our message parameter let's do const embed equals new embed builder we're going to go ahead and set a color and we can just go ahead and set that to blurple then we can go ahead and set a description and we're going to set that to message then let's go ahead and do await interaction to reply and we can go ahead and say our embeds and we can sign that to our embed and we're going to set informal to true on that message as well then let's go ahead and switch into our sub command let's go ahead and get our case which is going to be set up we can do if data then we can open this up we're going to go ahead and do await send message and we can say that system is already set up in channel so it's going to be channel specific then we're going to go ahead and say else uh, we're going to go ahead and do const allowed IDs equals, and we can do options that get string, and that's going to be allowed IDs. We can say var allowed array, and we can go ahead and set that equal to an empty array. Then we're going to do if, and we can say allowed IDs. So within this, we're basically just going to go ahead and split the arrays from our allowed IDs string, and then we're going to add them to the array, and then from there, we can add that to the schema. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and say allowed array equals allowed IDs as splits. We're going to split the comma, and then we can do num error function num.trim. We can actually come outside of that, and we can do await anti-caps, and we can do dot create, and we can open this up. We're going to get our guild, which is going to be our interaction on guild.id. We can get our channel, which is going to be our channel.id, and we can do allowed users. That's going to be our allowed array, just like that. So we've gone ahead and created our schema with all of our information. So now let's go ahead and do await send message. And within this, we can say, I have set up the anti-cap system in channel. So again, this is going to be channel specific. So you can set up the system in one channel. It will work in there. And then if you go to another channel, it won't work. So if you want it to be working there, you'll have to set up there too. So that way it's opt-in for all the channels within the server. Um, and we're not forcing anti-caps in everything if you set the system up. Now let's go ahead and continue so we can break. Let's do case and we're going to do disable we're going to go ahead and start off by saying if no data then we can go ahead and send our error message because we can't disable a system that doesn't already exist then we're going to go ahead and say else and we can do await anti caps and we can do dot delete one and we're going to go ahead and open this up let's get our guild because we're going to delete from the guild uh, and then we can get our channel and that's going to be the specific schema that we're going to go ahead and remove which contains the data for the channel 
then we can go ahead and send our confirmation message. So we're going to do await send message and we can say I have disabled the anti cap system in channel. So we're done with the setup and disable commands. So let's go ahead and close out of this file. We're going to go over to events and we can also go ahead and create anti caps.js. So within this, let's go ahead and get our events and then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our discord.js package. Then we can go ahead and get our schema. So again, we can do const anti caps equals require and we're gonna go ahead and find our schemas and we can do anti caps just like that. Then again, we're gonna do module.exports. We're gonna get our name, which is going to be events.messageCreate. Uh, we can do async execute. We're gonna go ahead and get our client and our message and we can go ahead and open this up. We're gonna say if and we can do message to author and we can do dot bot and then we're going to return because we want to ignore all of the bot messages within the server. So now we can go ahead and continue by getting our data. So just like we did in the other file, we can do const data equals await anti caps that find one. We're going to get our guild from our message.guild.id and our channel from our message.channel.id. Uh, then we can just check to see if we have any data within the channel by doing if no data, then we can return. So essentially, if this does not exist within that specific channel that the message is being sent in, then we're just going to go in and do nothing. So if we're down here, that means that there is data, which means we want to check the messages for capital letters. So we're going to do var check equals false. We can do var iteration equals zero. Uh, and then we can do await data dot allowed users. And then we can do dot for each. And we're going to do async user. And we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to do const u equals await client dot users dot fetch. We're going to get our user. And then we're going to go ahead and catch an error here. Then after we do that, we're going to go ahead and say if. And we can do u. We can open this up. And we're going to say if. And then we can do u dot id is equal to message dot author dot id. We're going to go ahead and set check to true. Um, and then outside this, we can go ahead and say iteration plus plus. So essentially what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and for each, every single one of the allowed users, then we're going to go ahead and fetch the actual variable from that allowed user ID. Um, if that allowed user exists, um, then we're going to go ahead and check to see if that allowed user is our message author. Um, and then if it is, we're going to go ahead and set the check variable that we've established up here to true. And then we're going to go ahead and continue our iteration as well. So now we're going to go ahead and say while and we can do iteration is less than data dot allowed users. And then we can do dot length. Then we can go ahead and open this up. Within this, we're going to do await new promise. And then we can resolve a timeout. Um, and we're just going to resolve our 1000 millisecond timeout, which is going to be a second. So the reason I added this in is because for some reason it jumps out of our for each and continues on before it gets all of the data. And I think the reason for that is because it takes a little bit to fetch uh, all of the data from MongoDB. Um, so this loop right here is actually going to take longer than the code wants. So it's going to continue on even if it's not done. Um, so if we just add a check line in here and we slow the loop down, um, basically every second, it's going to check to see if the iteration is complete. And then if it is, we can continue on. Um, but otherwise, it's going to wait for every single user to be filtered and checked. But before we continue on with the code. So now we can say if check, then we're just going to go and return. Then we can do const uppercase characters um, or like I've done here. And then we can say equals. And then we're going to actually say await message dot content dot split. Uh, we can do dot filter and then we can do character um, and then we can arrow function and filter this all the way through a to z and then we can do dot length so just go ahead and copy this line down it's going to be getting our filter in um, then we're going to go in and say if message dot content and then we can do dot length is greater than zero and we can go ahead and say uh, upper case and we can get what we did above uh, divided by message dot content dot length is greater than 0 0.5 um, and then we can go ahead and also say and message.content.length is greater than or equal to five. Then we can go ahead and open this up. All right, so this is kind of a specific line of code, but it's essentially going to uh, determine whether or not uh, the message has too many capital letters based off of our capital letter filter up here. Um, and then also based off of our message content as well. Now, the number here is pretty important. Um, this number right here is going to be the number of capital letters uh, that we're actually going to allow in a message. So you can increase this number or decrease this number accordingly, but I found that five is a pretty good number for the system. So now let's go ahead and do var msg equals await message dot reply, and we can say content. Um, and then let's just go ahead and get a caution emoji. And then we can say too many caps, and we're also gonna catch an error. Now let's go ahead and resolve another timeout, just like we did in the loop above, but this time let's go ahead and set it to three seconds. 
Then we're gonna go ahead and do await message.delete, and then we're gonna go ahead and catch an error. Um, and then we can do await message.delete again, uh, but this time we're deleting the message variable and not the actual message. Um, and then again, we're gonna go ahead and catch an error. So essentially what we're doing is if the message has too many capital letters in it, as established by our filter in this logical statement, then we're gonna send an initial reply saying it has too many caps. Um, we're gonna wait three seconds and then we're gonna go ahead and delete the initial message and our reply. So with that, we're actually done with this system. So let's go ahead and save the files, restart the bot and test this out. All right, so over in our Discord, let's go ahead and test this out. We can go ahead and run our setup command to set it up within this channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our channel. Um, and then we're just going to leave allowed IDs blank for now. So if we go in and send it, it's going to say I've set up the system in that channel. So let's go ahead and send three capital letters. We could send four capital letters um, in a message. We could even string this in with some um, non-capital letters or whatever. And nothing's going to happen. But as soon as we send five, it's going to say that there's too many caps. Um, and then within three seconds, it's going to go ahead and delete both messages. So that means we can spam capital letters and it's going to warn us every time. So even if we did it like this and then we did some lowercase, um, as you can see, it's going to say uh, too many caps. So essentially, it's going to prevent spamming of capital letters within this channel from any user at this point. So if we go into a different channel and we send the exact same message, essentially, it's not going to do anything because it's not set up within this channel. So now let's go ahead and disable the system within this channel. And now we can actually go ahead and set it back up within the same channel um, and this time let's add an allowed ID so I'm gonna go ahead and allow my ID um, and if we wanted to add more all we'd have to do is just add a comma after this one and then we could paste another ID in but I'm just gonna add in mine um, and then we can go ahead and send it so now if we go ahead and spam the system is set up but it's not gonna flag me because I'm an allowed user however if I were to go on a different account it has admin perms within the server but it is not an allowed user uh, we can go ahead and send a message here um, and it's going to say too many caps and then it's going to delete the messages. So regardless of um, what I send in here, if it has too many caps, it's going to flag me and delete the messages. Um, but if I'm on my main account, it is not going to do that because I'm an allowed user. All right, so that's how you can make an advanced anti-cap system for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.